welcome to Sherry Hales Ministries. I'm Sherry Hales, and today we will continue with our ministry series, How to Engage in and Exercise Effective Christian Communication in Deed. And today's deed is believe. So I want to get right into it. So believe. To believe is to accept something as true. It is to feel sure of the truth. It is to hold on to an opinion. Our focus scripture for this entire series is found in Philemon 6. Um, and Philemon only has one chapter, so it's Philemon 1, 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And that is our focus scripture. Um, that is the scripture that started this whole series. It talks about our faith communicating something. We know that communication is both by word and by deed. So the previous series looked at the words and then this series is looking at deeds of communication. Um, uh, words that express a deed as far as our Christian communication um, that's in the Bible. The question we're keeping in our mind for this entire series, what message does my faith walk communicate? It's not a question to compare, to um, condemn, or to measure. It's simply a question to remind us our faith does in fact commun communicate something. In fact, the Bible says we are living epistles. The scripture for this um, video will be um, John 4. 31 to 42. So if you want to follow along with me, I'll be reading the King James Version of John 4, 31 to 42. The Bible study participants will also be looking at 1 John 3, um, chapter 3, 18 to 4, 6. So um, if you would like to follow along in the um, Bible study and I and I invite you to and we welcome you to follow along with us what you would do is watch this video and also read 1st John chapter 3 uh, 18 to 4 to chapter 4 verse 6 you would subscribe to this channel so that you know when the Bible study video um, is available to view once it's available to view you would watch the Bible study video as well it will have, have the same exact title as this series, except at the very beginning of it, it will say Bible study. And um, at the end of our Bible study, we always engage in discussion. We find that to be a very rich part of the uh, Bible study because it um, helps you to think about um, the topic in a very practical way, to work it out in your own mind and it starts you thinking about how to apply it in your life. And so that's a very rich part. If you um, participate with us, you can also participate in the discussion part. You can either write questions for yourself to, you know, to cause yourself to think about different things, things that came through your mind when you were listening and something you want to look into more. Or if you even form a little Bible study in your home. Um, and, and you guys follow along and then when you get to the uh, discussion part, you just discuss together. Um, let's see. So, and you can um, also visit my website if you want to look at the previous series. They are all on the website and they're also on, on YouTube. Um, so you can just look at my channel and look at the videos as well there. Uh, if you want to look at my website, it is www.sherryhalesministries.weebly.com My name is spelled with a Y. And um, so, believe. So, this is the overview for believe. So, we know that as Christians, we our beliefs, the things that we are believing as far as our faith, is based on the Bible. It's based on the Word of God. So, the Bible teaches us in 2 Timothy 3, 16, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God 
and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And I would actually recommend that you look up those different things that, that it says that that scripture is good for. Um, just so you start getting, thinking about it in a way where it becomes literal, where it becomes real, where it becomes something that you are going to definitely apply to your life. Um, because as Christians, we should not just, you know, read the word and just to know it. We should also read it so that we can apply it in our lives. Um, then Numbers twenty three nineteen says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So I'm reading that just to say the Bible is reliable. What it says, we can believe. God is not a man that he should lie. He will not lie to us. So our beliefs can be based upon the word of God. And we will know that we are believing something that is true. The Bible teaches that God um, created mankind. God created the animals and all of nature, the universe, and all that is made was made by God. The Bible teaches that man is born of a sinful nature. Excuse me, due to the sin of Adam and is in need of a savior. The Bible teaches that God sent his son, Jesus, to redeem and save mankind from, from eternal damnation. As Christians, these are some of the teachings of the Bible, things that we are to believe. And as Christians, um, and basically I just said that, as Christians, we are to believe the word of God. We are to believe what the Bible says. And in some of my other videos, I've talked about how um, certain denominations have um, certain things that they add to the Bible, that they have additional beliefs, um, or some of the teachings of the Bible, they reject, they don't believe them. But according to the Bible, that is not the correct way to engage in Christianity. The correct way to engage and apply Christianity is to accept the whole of the Bible, rightly divided. Nothing added and nothing taken away. So um, my scripture that I'm going to be reading is John 4, 31 to 42. Again, I'm reading from the King James Version. So if you have a Bible already and you'd like to follow along, you can follow along. If you want to go grab a Bible, you can just pause the video, go grab your Bible. And then, you know, then you can follow along. So um, this is the story of uh, the conversion of Samaritans. It says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught, brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. And he that re reapeth receiveth wages, and gather fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth May rejoice together and herein is that saying true one soweth and another reapeth I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me all that I ever did so when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. 
and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And so our word believe um, showed up there a few times. So I'm just going to go back over it now and just kind of break down the scripture. So um, let's see. And, and this whole, this was talking about, and I didn't read back that far, but it's talking about um, a story when Jesus met a Samaritan woman at the well, and he knew things about her that she was amazed that he knew, and she perceived that he was a prophet. And then he told her, um, you know, uh, that he ended up actually telling her, revealing to her that he was Christ. And so if you want to, you know, hear, hear about that part, you know, just read that entire verse. But I didn't read back that far because my focus today is really on, on the word believe. So um, verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him saying, Master, eat. So right there, his disciples showed that they cared about him. So they were receiving they were receiving their teachings from Christ they were following him they were believing on him and they cared about him so this shows the heart of how a congregation or a body of believers should be to one another but also to towards um, the person that they are receiving from it should be it should be a, a, a relationship that is um, one that is born out of out of sincerity where they care sincerely care about one another and you can see that here they cared enough about him they cared so much about him that they wanted to make sure that he had something to eat and then verse 32 but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. So to them this was a mystery, and it says it in 33. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? So they were confused because they were thinking, I know there was nothing here to eat, so what? what is he talking about? Did somebody bring him something? So then verse 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work and Jesus saying that that reveals a very um, profound truth and that is that there is something that um, will nourish us our, our souls um, there is a soul nourishment our souls our very souls are in need of nourishment that is why sometimes people can feel so sad. They just have a sadness or they have um, a feeling of that they are not fulfilled. They're they, or they feel that something is amiss. Something is missing with inside of them. And a lot of times what they're feeling is that longing for their soul to be satisfied, to be filled, to be fed. And Jesus was saying that he was actually revealing that truth here. And then um, and and then what he was also saying is to satisfy his his that need for his soul to be fed. What would satisfy that is to do the work of him that sent him, but not only to do it but to actually finish it. So think about if you're hungry naturally and you have something to eat, say you have a sandwich or, or something to eat and you eat it, you know, one bite does not necessarily take away your hunger. Maybe two bites doesn't necessarily take care of your hunger. But in all likelihood, by the time you have finished the work, in other words, you've completed, you've eaten your entire sandwich. At that point, you're full. 
and, and you don't, you're not hungry anymore. That filled you. That filled that space. So this is what would fill, satiate that need for soul food for Christ. And then verse 35 says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. So here, he was yet revealing another profound truth. He was revealing a mystery. So um, he said, say not, say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. So he was in one sense talking about natural things. So let's say there was a, a, a crop and he was, and, and everyone knew it would take maybe about four more months before it was ready to harvest. So Jesus was saying harvest time in the natural doesn't come for four months. But then he was saying to them, then he turned it to spiritual truth. And he said, and then um, he said, behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look onto the hill, onto the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. So he was letting to them to letting them know that there that the the readiness was there, the readiness was there uh, for souls to be harvested for Christ. That people needed God. That the time was now. Um, and then I I actually looked at um, when I read that it it made me think about. A natural harvest as well and it made me think about how do you know when a field is actually ready when when something is really ready to harvest so I looked and it said um, I looked at different websites and one of them said in order to determine if a crop is ready to be harvested you should monitor monitor the head of the plant and that was very interesting to me because Christ is the head. He is actually the head. And so this is saying in order to know if a crop is ready to be harvested, you should monitor the head. Jesus is the head. And he was there. He was on the scene. He's the head. And it said, you will see that the head starts to form right in the center of the plant. So Christ was forming into um, becoming the one that would take away the sins of, of the world because he was in the process of eating. This is what he was doing. He was doing the will of him that sent him and he was about to finish the work. He was about to do that and come into um, the head, the new head of the church. So, um, and then, let's see. So Jesus was he actually is um, the head of the church so before jesus though before jesus think about this the one that was preparing the souls that was preparing the souls to be ready for harvest was john the baptist so um i read another i, I saw another uh, website and it says um it says that a test of readiness for harvest is called nodding. And it said that seed heads, seed heads will start to nod or bow on the stem when they are ready to harvest. So the seed heads will start to nod or bow. So I just said that John the Baptist was the head. He was the one preparing, he was the one preparing Christians first for harvest or the ones that would be Christians. He was preparing everyone to be ready for Christ. So he was the one that was getting the harvest ready. He was the one. And John, um, and it said that seed heads will start to nod or bow on the stem when they are ready to harvest. Now think about this. So John, he said this. He felt unworthy to baptize Christ 
because he knew who Christ was. He didn't feel like he was suitable, yet he submitted or bowed. Just like this says, he bowed. So he submitted, he bowed to fulfill so that the Old Testament would be filled. John was representative of the Old Testament as far as getting the church ready to receive Christ. Because remember, once Christ came, he fulfilled the law. And what he did in fulfilling, he had to be baptized by John the Baptist. He had to do that to fulfill the entire law. Once John the once Jesus fulfilled the entire old law, which John the Baptist was the head, he at that time he was the representative represented head. Okay? So then it says, now I'm gonna go back to this website that I looked at as far as a harvest. It says, so so that was one test. It said the first test was called nodding, and that's when the seed heads will start to nod or bow. So I just likened it to how John the Baptist actually nodded or bowed in submission so that he would uh, baptize Jesus. And then it went on to say, and another test is called picking it. And it said, in doing so, the individual seed head, the head, the seed head, is cut off. What happened to John the Baptist's head? It was cut off. In doing so, the individual seed head is cut off. And that's what happened to John the Baptist. His headship was severed. It ended. It had to end. The head is a representative because even though these things are happening and they are spiritual, but there's also a natural representative of what is going on. John the Baptist's head was literally cut off. He was the head representing the Old Testament. When Jesus came on the scene, that Old Testament had to be severed. And John the Baptist actually lost his head. His head was cut off off and I just thought that that was interesting because as I looked into it a little more I saw this actually falls right in line with what literally took place um, so then now I'm going to go on to verse 36 and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together let me read that again he and he that reapeth excuse me he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice. So in Christianity, a lot of times there is a joint effort. Things have happened in the in people's lives. Those that will be harvested um, or reaped for Christ to become who will become eventually Christians. Seeds have been sown in their lives before they ever accept Christ. This is saying everyone that has planted seeds along the way or or has done something they planted seeds they watered they whatever they did something to help bring that person to christ the person may not have the first time they heard about the message of christ they didn't accept god the second time they didn't accept maybe they heard about him 50 times before they actually decided to become a christian so at that point when they decide to become a christian a lot of times people are in church and a pastor is preaching and they and they then give the sinners, um, you know, call for sinners to come and be, you know, say the sinner's prayer. And so they go. But there were people that sowed all along who helped bring them to that place. And so Christ is talking about that. And he's also saying, and he that reapeth. So the pastor or leaders or um, ministers, people that are working, doing the work that God called them to do. He that reapeth receiveth wages. 
Christ is saying that wages, and that's where tithing comes from. That where is, that is where giving comes from. It is a biblical principle to give where, you know, um, to a house of worship or to when you're being um, fed is not by compulsion because it says it's from the heart. So you give as, as the Lord moves upon you to give, but it is a scriptural principle and God's, he rewards for giving. So when you give to Christ or you give to, um, uh, where you're receiving the message or, or, or being fed, God always repays and he always repays in abundance more than what the person ever gave. And so that's where the principle of tithing and giving comes from. And then verse 37 says, and herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. And I just kind of explained that. 38, and I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labor and ye are entered into their labors. I just explained that as well. Um, then verse 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed. There's our word, believed. Um, on him for the saying of the woman so uh, which testified he told me all that I ever did and so this is the part that I did not read in the scripture uh, I didn't read about the woman but that is what caused the Samaritans to believe because she went back and told them so a lot of people times when you are testifying when you give your testimony when you start talking about the Lord it is the things that you say sometimes, and you don't even really always know, but that is what will help bring others to believe. So the words that we speak, um, it, it holds weight that we have no idea, you know, because we could be giving someone the hope that they are, that they so desperately need just by pointing them to Christ. Um, and then verse verse there uh, I think I'm at 40 so 40 so when the Samaritans were coming to him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days so they were so thankful to Christ they you know when people really get it when they really receive Christ and they get it it's like oh this is what Christianity is about it is such a relief it's like wow this is what my soul needed and you realize that christ is what you needed and they were so thankful and they just wanted him to stay around and he was gracious enough and he stayed with them a few more days and then it says uh, verse 41 and many more believed because of his own word so more people so it is words words are so powerful and weighty we often take them for granted, but they are so powerful and weighty. And these people believed because of words. And then verse 42, and said unto the woman, now we believe. So, so the people now are talking to that woman who, who told them about Christ and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves. And know that he, that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And so when, when you get that for yourself, and the only way you can get that for yourself is to dive into the word yourself. You have to dive into this living water for yourself. And you will someday be able to truly say from your heart, like they said, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves. The Bible speaks to us. And if you read it, you will hear him for yourself. And it says, and now, and, and know that, that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. And so our word was believe. And so, you know, I talked in the beginning about what we are to believe and um, and then the story shows um, the gravity of believing because we can't be Christians without believing. Believing is important and we must believe um, that which is true. So um, 
you know, uh, believing is, is so important and, you know, and, um, I could go a lot of different ways with it, but I think I'm just going to leave it right where it is and ask that the Lord will bless us. Father God, thank you so much for this message. I pray that you will help us to pull out of it just what we need so that our beliefs are right, so that we are not believing folly or lies or, or believing things um, in, a, in a wrong way. Help our belief. Help us to believe correctly your word of God, so that we can also then tell others correctly about who you are and that they will hope, hopefully in turn want to get to know you for yourself, for themselves. Lord, I ask that you will bless us and keep us. Make your face to shine upon us. Lift up your countenance upon us. Be gracious to us and give us peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.